Hi everybody, welcome back. By now, you should have your Visual Studio installed and you were able to create .NET VBF project. Now, let me take you on a short tour around Visual Studio and I want to show you a few essential things. I will not go very deep, I just want to show you the most important things so you know where to focus your attention before we dive into XAML and start coding. And let's continue where we stopped in the previous lesson. As I've mentioned before, right here on the left, you have the preview of your form. And on the right, you have your kind of XAML code. And here you can see there is Windows, there is Grid, and I'm going to explain more about XAML structure and syntax in the next lesson. For now, we're just getting familiar with the Visual Studio itself, so don't pay attention too much on the code. I'm just going to quickly add here a button, and I'm going to define the content is test, the height is 50, width is 100. And you can see here is my button, and I can see my preview. I navigate here by using the scroll wheel. You can hold Ctrl to kind of zoom in, zoom out, and it's very convenient. Now, there are a few really good things here about the VPF designer. First of all, the toolbox. You can see it right here on the side, and when clicking it, it should open you all the elements. Right here, you can see all common VPF controls, and here's all VPF controls at all. We're going to come back to this in a moment because sometimes you don't see this toolbox at all. For example, if I'm going to click here, I'm going to close it, now it's gone. And now to get it back, we're going to click here on the view and then you'll notice here toolbox. It also has Ctrl Alt X shortcut. Let's click on it and it's going to be back. So don't lose it. And if you do, just go to the view and click here on the toolbox. Now let's pin it here on the side. And in this toolbox, you can see all possible elements inside of VPF XAML. For example, I can see here is a button checkbox. And what you can do, you can drag it and drop it on your canvas. For example, here's the button, here's the checkbox. Right here is maybe some image and so on. You can see there's a lot of different elements and we won't cover all of them. I'm just going to focus on the essentials. But you can see already that you can drop different elements here and have a look at them. You can click on them, it selects them, it also kind of highlights the code. For example, you can see the checkbox is somewhat highlighted. If I click on the button, now this button is highlighted and so on. And same here. If I'm going to be clicking in the code, it's going to select something on the canvas. Now, you should never design your forms by just drag and dropping here. Sure, it's very quick and easy to make it, but it's going to be quite horrible experience for your forms. Because if I'm going to try to maybe make it smaller, you can see they, they are not kind of responding to me dragging and it's actually breaking. Here I have my button broken and so on. So never do it like this, but it's really convenient to sort of just go through, find all the elements, how they named. You can see, okay, here is maybe a checkbox. You drop it here. And another good thing is that you can explore what's available inside these elements. Let's select this, for example, checkbox, right click, and right here is the properties. And you will see right here, you open the properties menu. Let's put it all the way up. And in here, you'll be able to see all the attributes inside different classes of these components. So if I'm gonna select button, you'll see here the type is the button, it doesn't have any name, and there are all the settings. For example, here's the brush, and it represents everything related to colors. Let's maybe say that I wanna set my background to be orange, and then the foreground, which is going to be the color, it's going to be black. Now let's close this one. We're going to go to layout. You will see, all right, here is the width. I want to make it maybe a little bit less height. Let's also make it less here. Then I want to modify the text. I'm going to come here. I want to make it bold right away. And you can see everything changes right away. And it's not only changing here. What you will notice is that you're actually modifying your code right here in the XAML. Now in here, I think I'm dealing with the first button. So let's make some space. and in here, you see, this is the name of the kind of tag. This is the system windows controls button. And then you have different attributes, which we've just kind of changed in this menu right here in the properties. So let me put them on each line so we can see them all at once. And you'll notice that by going into the button and changing these properties here, I've also added this code here automatically. We set the font way to be bold, the foreground to this color, background to this color. The margin is just based on the kind of position here. And because we dropped it like this, like you never should do. It doesn't have any relation to properly position it. It just kind of says the margin and this is not good. Then it says like, okay, it's part of this grid. Here's the width and height. And this is really nice because when you need some kind of property and you don't know the name, you can either go to ChatGPT and say, hey, listen, I have this XAML file. Here's my element. How do I make maybe it rounded, change the color, make it look nicer, add the shadow, whatever. Or you can just go here and check the basic properties yourself. Oh, you can see, I can change my opacity. Let's set it to 50. And immediately opacity was set to half. 
And this is really convenient way to kind of go here and find at least the names of all these attributes. And you can figure out how it works later on. But first, you need to kind of find how does it even work. For example, here is rotation. I can rotate it. I can do a lot of things here. All right, these are the things about properties. Now, in this property menu, you will also notice right here, there's this icon with a kind of spark and it's event for selected elements. Because in VPF, you can set events for pretty much all your elements. You can set when you hover over element, when you click on the button, when you, I don't know, fill in the text box or whatever. Whenever you do something, there are also lots of events with these elements. I can click here. And you will see there's a big list of events. But let's say, for example, the most common one, the button clicked. I'm just gonna scroll through until I find it. All right, and in here, I can see the click, the first one. Let's say that I wanna use it and you need the name of your event. For example, here, I'm just gonna call it button clicked. Let's click on enter. You'll notice that we open the C-sharp chord right away. Because in the Visual Studio, when you're gonna create your XAML form, it's also been gonna be connected to your kind of C-sharp code right away. And in here, because we call this event button clicked, it also created it here. But listen, we're not gonna use C Sharp, so you don't have to worry and you don't need to fill anything here. It's gonna be created here automatically in case you're gonna use events like this. And when you're gonna come here, you might get scared that, okay, you just lost your XAML code and so on. Don't worry, everything is fine. Here on the top, you have the tabs. Right now, we are in the C Sharp file and I can go back to the XAML file. And when I do, it will always open this kind of designer and the code itself. And what's important here, you'll also notice that right here we have the attribute click, which refers to this event, and it has the name button clicked. I'm going to cover events in a separate lesson because this is a really important thing, and I'm going to show you how to connect events with Iron Python, because this is where many of you might have some struggle. But just in general, know that, all right, we have our preview here, we have our code here, and all around there are a lot of different features. You can find all different kind of components, or they're called controls actually, right here in the toolbox. And it's really good to know what's even available there. For example, you can see, oh, there's a slider. And this looks quite cool. Then you click on it. You don't know anything about it. So you can go to the properties and have a look. What can I do with the slider? So in here, maybe I'm going to go to the common or somewhere here, I can set the values for the slider. All right, here it is. Let's set it to five and you can see I moved it. And now from this, you'll know that, all right, you have the slider, which is right here, the code of the slider. Let's just put it all on a new line so it's a bit easier to read. And now in here you see, all right, there is maximum and minimum. I can just come here and write, okay, the minimum is going to be, let's say, 2, and the maximum is going to be 100. And it also changes it here. So you have kind of both ways. You can directly go to the code and just change anything here, or you can go to this kind of property menu and change it manually. And this is going to be very convenient because you don't remember the names of all the attributes, properties in the beginning. Even though they're not that complicated, just know that you still can come here and find everything. But again, the best way to sort of fill all these attributes and make it look right is to ask ChatGPT. But we're going to cover this in another module in the end of this course. Because at first you need to learn how to do it manually so you can also ask the right questions. Now, also, I want to show you that sometimes you might accidentally close this XAML, right? Do you want to change? Yeah, definitely want to change something. Booms, you close it, you, don't, you cannot get it back. Because you created this project, right here you have your sort of project explorer. You might also close it sometimes, but it's called solution explorer. So if you're going to close it, you have to go to git, and somewhere here there should be solution explorer, and it's right here on the top. When I click on it, you open it again. And here you will see your files, you have your app XAML, you have your main window, this is where we're working. And with this main window, you also have your C-sharp file, which is here. Now, we're not going to go that deep. We kind of never going to use it really. All I want to use here is have my XAML file, which is right here, and have the preview. So I can work right away and kind of do my changes, make the form. And later, I'm going to show you how to connect it to PyRevit. And right here, you can also click on the play, and this is going to preview your kind of form. The thing is that it's not that relevant because most of the time you will start working with Revit API and for example in your form you would want to display your wall types and you wouldn't be able to do that because your code is not going to correspond with this. And again the code is going to be in C sharp and we work in Python so it's not that relevant. But as the first step we just focus on the UI form and this might be quite useful. You can create it, you can have a look, okay I can touch my slider, touch some checkboxes, check is it responsive, obviously it's not and so on. Honestly, I never really preview this, so let's just close it and forget that it even exists. But in case you want to, you can try it here. Now, another thing is the document outline. 
this might be useful just to kind of a bit easier to navigate. Because you see the XAML, it has this kind of tree structure. Have a window on the top, then inside the window you, for example, have a grid. Inside the grid you have your button and a few other elements. And let's say that maybe here I would have my stack panel, then inside I would have a another button, then there's another button, then there's maybe text block or whatever. Listen, I'm not gonna fill any properties now because it's not the XAML time. You can see there are some buttons and everything weird in this kind of... What I wanna show you is that right here you have the document outline. And it might be convenient for you to kind of see this overall look of your form without all the code and all the attributes. You can see in here you have your window, you have your grid, you have your stack panel, then there's buttons and so on. This, these elements are inside the stack panel and so on. And it's pretty much the same as you have right here on the right, but without all the attributes, and it's much easier to kind of get the idea and find the right elements. Now, let's close the document outline. And again, if you're going to close it accidentally, it should be somewhere here. Then in here, I think we need to select other windows, and I think it should be somewhere here. Yeah, right here. Document outline, it's Control alt t Let's click on that one, and you have it back here. I just don't want to have it pinned, so it's going to be here. All right, and that was pretty much it about Visual Studio. And as you can see, there are really a lot of things inside of Visual Studio. It's a really made for the large scale kind of application development. And there's a lot of things for the building your solutions, for designing, for debugging, for connecting Git and so on. We're not gonna cover any of that. I just show you the, the bare basics because all we wanna get out of the Visual Studio is the XAML editor. So we can write our XAML code, we have our preview, and we can also look inside at all the properties, events, and maybe a few additional things. Overall, there is not much else that we need inside of Visual Studio. We're just getting probably like 1% out of this whole software, but we don't really need the rest. We're just gonna use our PyCharm on Visual Studio code for the, our Iron Python code. And we're just gonna get our example out of it. All right, and I hope that Visual Studio feels a little bit more familiar now, and we are ready to dive into the big topic of XAML. And I will see you in the next lesson where I will do my best to explain what the hell is XAML and how to use it. So goodbye and we'll see each other soon.